Of course, we all know about feminism, but have you heard about white feminism? It's like being a woman, except you're oppressed twice as much. Let's have a look. You might have heard the term white feminism used lately. Not until I said it just then, no. After Nicki Minaj and Taylor Swift's Twitter exchange. Definitely not that. I mean, I don't even follow those bitches. Or when people critique HBO's girls. Yep, no idea what that is, and judging by the leather-clad green-haired monster that's on the screen right now, I don't think that would be up my street nor down my proverbial alley. But what does it mean? It means that feminists have created a hierarchy of women according to how oppressed they say they are. In my mind, it goes white women, black women, disabled women, disabled black women. Because that's the ultimate oppression right there, isn't it? That's the daddy. Uh, 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 that's the mummy. Basically, white feminism is feminism that ignores intersectionality. So by that definition, I'm feminism, because I don't give a shit about that either. So not all feminists who are white are white feminists. You know, you may have reached the point where you've redefined words to such a degree that we can no longer distinguish them from one another. What you've just done is called something a cake when it is quite clearly a biscuit. <gasps> you've done what Jaffa Cakes did! Though there was this whole brouhaha about whether or not they're actually biscuits because biscuits don't carry tax. Anyway, you've taken so many words and redefined them that the combination of those redefined words no longer makes sense. You're short-circuiting the English language. Huffington Post is at critical mass. But most white feminists are white. Just when you thought it couldn't get more defini. That's why they're always stood up in these videos, so they can pull these things out of their ass. Because white people just don't have to think about things like race on a daily basis. And neither do black people, or Asians, or Indians, or who. No one has to think about race. That's why you find so many people smiling and having a good time. And we're not just pulling the race card. Are you sure though? Because this all does seem very race cardy to me. You are talking about a branch of feminism that is apparently dominated by white females and you're switching back and forth between a white woman and a black woman so much that I almost had an epileptic fit. Seems pretty race cardy. White feminism excludes the experiences of basically anyone who's not white, cis, and straight. Well then, I would like to retract my previous statement and propose the following. You are not only playing the race card, but also the trans card and the gay card. Because we all get cards when we're born. I'm a white male, so mine gets me money. Here's why that's so problematic. Because you can't say, here's why there's a problem, can you? Who would really watch these videos if it weren't for the use of such classics as intersectionality and problematic? First, it assumes the way white women experience misogyny is the way all women experience misogyny. Because, of course, all women experience misogyny because, you know, women. The first thing a girl does when pulled from the womb is make the doctor a fucking sandwich. Oh look, here comes Maisie with her first BLT. Thank you, Maisie. Wait, I said no mayo, you bitch! Now make it again! And that's just not true. And there we go! We have it from a black woman. No citation needed, right? Can you imagine what she was like turning in an essay at university? The lecturer is like, where's your bibliography? And she's like, I don't need one, I'm a black woman. Like, oh, oh shit, yeah, sorry, so you are, sorry about that. The thing is, misogyny is the hatred of women. No mention of creed or ethnicity, just women. So you could say it is completely devoid of racism, couldn't you? Every woman gets fucked up equally, yay! White feminism aims to close the wage gap between men and women. Well, you'd have better luck trying to find the Hellmouth in Sunnydale if you're trying to close things that don't fucking exist. But what it fails to recognize is that most of the time, Latina and black women make even less than white women. The thing about representing these things with stars that your audience might know is that they have contracts which outline how much they get paid. For the pros like us, different jobs pay different wages regardless of gender because we're not making a living off of our image. The only people affected by this wage gap are the people on the screen, and that's down to their fucking agents to sort out. And not forgetting, I don't recognize the middle one, and Julia Roberts is shit. 
and police brutality should be viewed as a feminist issue. Whoa, whoa, why should that be a feminist issue? Are you just taking all the things now? Like car insurance is now a feminist issue, space travel is now a feminist issue. Do you want to take out a mortgage? You have to go through feminism. But it doesn't affect white women the way it affects women of color. It's not a fucking contest, you fear-mongering fucknut. Police brutality isn't a fucking feminist issue because we want something more done about it than just fucking organized marches and wanky little hats. You can't be trusted with real issues. If Sandra Bland had been a white woman, would a simple traffic stop have resulted in an arrest? Oh fuck, now you're gonna make me fucking look up Sandra- It wouldn't be the Huffington Post without me having to fucking read something, would it? Okay, right, she was pulled over on a traffic offence, escalated the situation, and resisted arrest. Fair enough. You get banged up for that in all fucking cultures. Would she be viewed as a loud, angry black woman? Well, that depends. If she is a loud and angry and black woman, then yes. But she wasn't. She was a loud, angry black woman who disobeyed a lawful order and so got arrested. And then resisted that arrest. Take it from me, once those cuffs are on, there is no point in fighting. Everything you do from then on is recorded, so you might as well behave. Would she be dead? Well, the ruling was of suicide, so that's on her. Not misogyny, not racism, and not on the officer that arrested her. That's all on her. Don't hold it up as an example of martyrdom or something, because she probably would have got off with a fine for the traffic offence and a slap on the wrist for resisting arrest. <laughs> Talk about an overreaction. White feminism ignores the role that whiteness plays in creating things like beauty standards. So you're just gonna go from a woman being pulled over, arrested, and later killing her herself because of racial misogyny to beauty standards. Just gonna segue right on in there, eh? Oh, fucking seamless. For example, this is okay. Well, I don't think I'd be taking her home to meet my mum, but yeah, I'd be a fool to turn that down. But this isn't. Well, the same thing again, really. I mean, I don't see her sitting at the dinner table like that, for one. And anyway, that's the cover of a song that snapped 30 million views on Vimo and YouTube in the first week. How exactly did the cover stop it from being a success? If anything, Nicki Minaj's ass sells more music than it doesn't, so shut the fuck up. White women are most often the faces of feminism. You see, no one would normally give a shit about that as long as the issues are addressed properly, but no! For some people, it's all about banking some FaceTime, isn't it? Wanting to be seen as progressive, as a feminist, doing feminist things. Tina Fey, Tara Swift, Amy Schumer have been able to break into industries that have been dominated by cis white men. Because they are fucking talented! Excluding Taylor Swift, who I see as meh. They didn't break into the business, which is near fucking impossible for everyone, by the way. They didn't break into the business because they are women. They got in because they are fucking good at what they do, and they got recognised for it. They make people money, Huffington Post. I still don't know how you guys do that. But black women, women of colour, we face barriers that white women don't. I'm not falling into the trap of expecting an explanation to that one. I'm just going to accept that you will not elaborate on it and I will move fucking on. Critiquing white feminism- I fucking told you though, didn't I? Didn't I? I fucking told you. No explanation or anything. They just make a statement and never talk about it again. We're learning, people. We're learning. It isn't about silencing those women. It's about opening up space for even more diverse voices to be heard. No, it's not. It's about one person's opinions and experiences being taken with more credence due to the colour of their fucking skin. Good luck with that equality thing, guys. You are nailing it. And that's great for everyone. Being a white feminist doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you have a lot to learn. Oh, and we all love learning, don't we? It's not like most of us spend our days working for absolutely fuck all and then like to chill the fuck out by playing video games or watching TV until we have to do it all again the next day. Oh, we're doing it all wrong. We should be reading bell fucking hooks during the sweet hours we have on this earth to ourselves. Fuck you. The most important thing any white feminist can do is If she says drink bleach, I will piss myself. Educate herself and listen and engage with the experiences of women of color without silencing them. Well, that depends. If she's chatting shit, I will tell her to shut the fuck up. Same as anyone. Now that's some equality. Because sometimes as white ladies, we just have to shut the fuck up.
Holy shit! That then! That is how feminists talk to everyone else, listen and believe. Fuck, it all makes sense now. It's like that bully at school who was a massive prick to everyone, but it turns out he was bullied at home. Feminists just lash out at regular people because they're getting knocked around by other feminists higher up the food chain. Damn, it all makes sense. Poor little things. They're still pricks, though. Thanks for watching, guys, and remember, in a deck full of race cards, it's best to be the Joker.